go. Hi guys, I am here with your Bible reading. And in Revelations chapter 21 today, we are going to get into a little bit of what we're going to have to look forward to when Jesus comes back. The new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. And we are going to start out with a new heaven and a new earth. Take a break from talking about um, all the bad stuff that's going to happen to the people that are not saved and get into some good stuff to talk about what's going to happen to us who are if we stay faithful to Jesus. A new heaven and a new earth. Revelations chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Can you not even imagine that? He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are tr trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly and unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, which of course he's referring to hell and eternity and torment. And now the new Jerusalem, the bride of the lamb. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great white wall with 12 gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, and three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. 
can you imagine how beautiful that's going to be? The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, which is us who are saved. Now you see a little bit of what we have to look forward to. which when I think of loving my Father in Heaven and my brother Jesus, my brother Jesus and Father in Heaven, I do not even think of these things. I just think of being with them forever. You know, just being able to be with them and love them forever. I don't even think about, you know, how beautiful and wonderful it's gonna be. But God loves us so much that he wants us to be treated like his princesses and princes, his children. He wants us to be treated like royalty that we are to him. Better than any king, queen, princess, prince has on this earth. That's how much he loves us. And you tell me where you can find that kind of love anywhere else. And I will prove you wrong. Okay, guys. Our psalm for today is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you guys. I want to tell you um, after I got done with Revelations up there. I got this little joke that I heard before that reminds me of when was, what was talking about today in Revelation. This guy, this guy, this old man died. And the angels met him at the gate and he begged them to let him take one thing to heaven with him. And they kept telling him, you know, no, no, over and over. 
And he kept begging them and begging them and begging them. And finally they said, okay, go get one thing. So he goes back and he bags up his gold and brings his gold. And he goes into heaven with his gold. And the angels laugh, talking to each other and said, why would he bring pavement to heaven? Because <laughs> the streets of heaven, as you just heard, are going to be made of pure gold. And, and why would he bring pavement, you know, <laughs> to heaven? I just thought, that just made me think of that joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. All right. Our Proverbs for today. Wow. We got, it's the big Proverbs today. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 24. This is their longest Proverbs yet, I believe. Epilogue. The wife of noble character. My eyes keep watering for days and I just don't know. I don't even put my scare on and they still water. <sighs> the wife of noble character. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. How I wished I could be more like that woman. Be able to do the stuff that she does. Especially helping the needy and the poor. What is all I think about doing if I was ever blessed to win the lottery or something? Just trying my, you know, doing what I can to the best of my ability to help the poor and the, the needy, people and animals. But that's more than likely never going to happen, so I just wish people that did have the money that we know that are really, really rich would help. I mean, if they would all just help do it, there'd be a lot less suffering, you know, with food-wise and stuff people that are starving and whatnot. They can make little little houses for the homeless and stuff, you know. I don't know. Just if everybody would just help a little. But that's probably never gonna happen either. We'll have to wait for God's judgment day. Alright guys, well that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys all again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.